Created by figure sculptor Michael Lovejoy, Burrows and Badges allows for gaming within a fantasy world of anthropomorphic animal miniatures. Set within the Kingdom of Northumbra, the rules cover skirmish level combat between small warbands. Each miniature in the game is a character, so there are no rank and file warriors. The miniatures range in size from tiny shrews at 20mm or less to massive badgers at 45mm tall, allowing for a wide variety of character types. The rules may be referred to as role playing game light, a warband skirmish game with character progression. In keeping with RPG style theme, the rules use the full range of polyhedral dice. This helps to differentiate the races, allowing big differences between a small stealthy mouse and a big battle hungry wildcat. To avoid complexity, given that there are so many different races, weapons, equipment, spells and so forth, every rule in the game, be it combat, stealth or movement, is based around a single core mechanic. There is a statistic profile for each of the character types. These statistics are movement, strike, block, ranged, nimbleness, concealment, awareness, fortitude and presence. Each statistic makes use of a particular dice type. In addition, each statistic has an opposite stat, for example, strike and block. To hit an enemy, the character rolls their strike stat dice against the enemy's block stat dice. This means that every situation in the game is resolved by an opposed die roll. A warband roster sheet is used to record the statistics. At the simplest level, a player will declare an action, say to shoot a bow at the enemy model. They will take whatever dice is assigned to their range statistic and roll it, adding or subtracting any modifiers. Their opponent will roll the dice assigned to their nimbleness statistic, plus or minus any modifiers. If the shooter's range roll is higher than the target's nimbleness roll, the shot is hit. Having each statistic paired with an opposed version means that there are more statistics than most games used. Combined with the need to track wounds, equipment, skills and all the other elements of a progressive campaign game on a player's warband roster, this means it is important to keep the number of characters small. Most warbands start with around 5 characters, with a maximum size of 10. Given the nature of the desire to add individual characters, there are options to customise the warbands. There are four different allegiances a warband can take. These provide certain benefits to the warband, but also help distinguish them. A royalist warband, for example, has benefits which make them better at fighting, whereas a rogues warband has increased stealth and luck. Once the player has decided their allegiance, they pick a leader and a second, any character can be a magic user too. Equipment choice adds further variations. Magic plays a large part in the realms of Northumbra, taking the role of natural, light, dark, wild, unbound and noble magic. Although there are many magic users, both learnt and natural magicians, it is an unpredictable and dangerous force. Each spell has a target number to roll against to use that spell. Each character may be given a range of different skills, which all make use of one of the core statistics. There are six skill areas, fighting, shooting, cunning, stealth, movement and innate. The number of wounds a character can take can be suggested by the size of the animal concerned. Small beasts like shrews or mice would have a small number of wounds, and the bigger animals would have more. However, to keep the warband roster sheet generic, a special skill called Tough is used. This skill reduces the amount of wounds taken by its value each time damage is suffered, and means that even though all characters have 16 wounds, some are much harder to take down. Each player has a store of Fate points, and uses them to influence dice rolls. Adding a Fate point allows the player to roll an extra dice. There are a complete set of campaign rules, taking each player through the pre-battle and post-battle sequence. There are also adventures which take place between games, allowing opportunities for warbands to evolve. Characters who go out of action during a game may suffer permanent injuries, or even die. New characters may be hired, and equipment bought and sold. You might be offered a cheap magic item by a shifty merchant. New skills and statistic increases may have been earned too. There are also rules for dens, a place your warband can call home. 
Between games, your heroes can labour to add new sections to their den, giving special in-game benefits. Or they can wander Northumbra instead, and maybe find something useful, or get into trouble. There are eight scenarios in the book, and more will be added to the website. To enhance the longevity of each of the scenarios, players will find a secondary objectives chart, 18 additional elements that alter the way a scenario is played. Burrows and Badgers provides a narrative campaign based experience that most gamers should find enjoyable. The level of detail in the characters is sufficient to create an enjoyable experience, but the actual rules are simple to use, with some record keeping that is far from odorous. As a fantasy adventure opportunity, this is a unique world which is fully realised whilst accessible. Given the tendency for fantasy skirmish games to reflect one another, the background and approach taken here makes a refreshing change to those looking for something different from the norm, and the miniatures range which supports it is excellent.